pause. Um, so, let me take you back in time, a couple months, where I realized there's a brand that I've never reviewed on this channel that is synonymous with old school audiophilia, and their amp still exists in Japan, and here it is. This is a Kenwood. Say it with me, children. Kenwood. She sounds like a golfer. But Kenwood existed. My father even had an old, like, box light you would put on top of your equipment and it had, like, a fluorescent bulb in it. And it would just glow and it said Kenwood. And that was like, you're proud of the Kenwood name. So, randomly on Amazon, this amp popped up in my recommendations. And it's called the Canna. And I didn't use Canna as a wallpaper because I'm saving those. I use that one. Download in the description. But it's called the KA-NA7. No idea what that stands for. And the issue with this amp is, it's Japanese. Like, it's not supposed to be here in America. And if you're watching this and you're 53% of my audience, you're not in America. But the odds are it's not in your place either. So why did you buy it, Zeos? Just because I wanted to try it. I wanted to, I got it, I had to know. And it's built strange as fuck. You could tell it's not competing with like SMSL stuff or topping stuff. This is its own little world it lives in. If I had to give it a close competitor, as far as feature set, size, what it's aiming at, it's gonna be the PS Audio Sprout. Probably the 100, but th there's a joke coming up about power deficiency and you're gonna laugh. Um, I've got my Yamo S803s here because um, I just had to sh I went shopping and I took I had two pairs of white speakers. I got these new Soundrise stands in white and I wanted to show them off and I figured the best way to show off white Soundrise stands is white speakers, white, 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 brown girl. Um, well, she's tan, we're gonna call her tan. Uh, and this silver thing doesn't belong here. Now all the words in it are in English. It's, it says Kenwood, it says volume, it says source, it says phones. And it says digital integrated amplifier. Got a Bluetooth symbol, near field communications. It's got this strange, it weighs nothing. That's number one. The first indication this is not something competing with SMSL or topping. I have the topping A50 here, the little headphone amp. You would, you'd need four of these to weigh as much as that little tiny headphone because they're fucking big bulky aluminum. This is all plastic. Good looking plastic though. So it's like, it's not terrible looking. We got rubber feet. We got little, it's adorable because it's trying to be a big unit. It's got actual feet like you'd find on a full size like that. If that has feet, this has little feet. It's all scaled down. It's got a big knurled volume knob, which is pretty sure also plastic. Yeah, it might be aluminum. It might be very, very lightweight aluminum. We've got a little screen. Um, as you can see here, I've got an uh, SD card, uh, SD card, wow, it's been a while. I've got a USB stick plugged in, it's a tiny one, it's like an eight gig. Um, there's your standby light, it's blue. There's your infrared receiver for your remote control, which is jam packed and useful. Volume knob, blue LED on top, which I hate blue, but it doesn't annoy me in this scenario because they're doing a good thing with it. It's visible from the front that it's on and it's also visible from the top that it's on, which is another problem because the power button is on top. And that's fine if you don't put anything on top of this, but if you do, you well, you, you can't, you, you, you can't. So power button there, near field communications there, power indicator over the volume knob, which is not centered, source button, play pause, headphone out. Three and a half millimeter headphone out. So we're gonna be plugging two headphones in. I've got these, which are my HD600s, which are pretty hard to drive. And I've got those, which are the Focal Stelias, which are an amazingly accurate, great close back that's very easy to drive. And we'll plug them both in in a second, and I'll explain what I'm hearing. Um, the bottom has a ton of vents, ton of vents. This is a speaker amp, after all. We need to turn this around. Can I get, what do I need? I need more of everything. Give me everything. Um, so I don't have to take out these fucking speaker wires. So you can see I cut them out of a four by 16. You get little speaker terminals here, spring loaded. You can't get banana plugs in it. You're all leaving already. You're not even considering this. Trust me, I had to go in my closet, find wires, cut them, strip them, put them in here. It's been so long since I've had to do that. It's, it, 
makes me sick. Um, so there's that. Your power is a power plug here, which is a little bit strange. I'll, I'll unplug it. The unit doesn't explode. Hold on, I'll turn it off. Goodbye. It said goodbye. Uh, it's like a coaxial, so it's got a pin in there and then around. So that's another reason you know. You can actually see there's a circle with another circle inside of it. It says DC in, and then that's all Chin Japanese. Japanese, not Chinese, Japanese. Does it say? Made in Malaysia, so that's close. Malaysia's closer to Japan than China, even though it probably isn't physically, but I'd rather have Malaysian made. So we've got PC in, audio in, which is just a three and a half millimeter, and a fiber optic, and the fiber optic fucking blew my mind. Because you look, and you know how fiber optics look, and I'm looking at the door, and the door is hinged on this side, which means it goes like that. Which means the flat part should go like this. No, 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 no. This is some weird shit. It goes in this way, but the flat part, if, you, if you've ever plugged in a fiber optic, it, it actually goes in the top of the thing always, like it should be oriented, but the door is on the side. They move the door 90 degrees in the hinge. I don't understand why. I don't understand why. I don't understand why. And that's a tour of the outside of this unit. It's very neat, very clean, very light, very silver. I had it on a piece of foam just to get it sort of like propped up because the screen here, it's on standby and it's blue. And when I turn it on, the standby is still on blue. So the standby just is a power indicator. It's not really a standby. Usually in the old, old days, unit was on, it was on, all the lights were on, all the buttons, knobs lit up. When you shut it off, then the standby light came on red to indicate that it's on standby. This one's fucking confused. This one's just, oh, it's plugged in. So it's a plugged in indicator. We are currently set to Bluetooth, which let's see if it reconnected. I'm sending the Bluetooth out of this, which is the new M15. Reconnected immediately. These speakers are very good, by the way. I had a choice between these or the Bucard S200s. You can't really buy the S200s anymore, but that's not the reason I didn't take them down. The reason is I always take those down. I don't think I've ever taken these off the shelf. I put them up there. I love them. I put them up there. And they've been sitting there for like, what, a year and a half? So it was time. Um, so now that I'm Bluetoothing from this, I can pick up the remote. Let's look at the remote. Standard size, like, projector remote or something. Power on off, big red button, sleep, which means you can just sleep. 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, off. So it's a sleep timer. On a system like this, that's fucking great. Having an actual sleep button where you're just like, you know what? I'm gonna leave the music playing, I'm gonna put the baby to sleep, I'm gonna go make a sandwich, and then I'm gonna go, you just go, buh, 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 set it to 30, 40 minutes, in 40 minutes it shuts off, it's done. Now, here's, that would mean your music stops playing and the amp shuts off, but maybe your source doesn't. Most topping, no Chinese whatever amps just don't make any heat, so it doesn't really matter. There's no draw. I have a, an amp in my bathroom, a SA36. It's on for the last four and a half years. I have a 12 volt transformer and the lights and that amp never shut off, ever. There's zero draw. And I have a little Amazon, uh, Amazon Echo Dot. Sitting there, and if I say, hey, play the Rolling Stones, my bathroom plays Rolling Stones. So, um, power, sleep. This bank that is not squared out, because you're missing one, but you get Bluetooth play pause, USB play pause, up, down, stop, last track, next track, and then folder. Then display, which works on certain inputs. And this is like a first. Bluetooth connected to this, to this, right? And it says Bluetooth until you hit display. Now I hit display and it says tribulation. It's a, I want to warn you about this screen. Anyone who ever left an old phone or an old fucking Game Boy or something in a car in the winter, when you turn it on, it's like super slow and laggy and ghosty. That's this screen all the time. So tribulations, let's hit it again. Kyle Dixon, let's hit it, and meh, meh, and Michael, it's too slow, no. Stranger, th it literally is reading the ID3 tag information from the Bluetooth. 
I didn't even know that was a thing. I can't personally think of any other thing. I, I'm not, not including car audio, but I can't think of any other device that you Bluetooth connect to and it knows that information. That would legitimately mean, if it could pull ID3 tag information, it should be able to pull fucking um, that. Replay gain. Thank you. I've lost my fucking mind. It should be able to pull a replay gain information because that's just a decimal amount and then adjust the volume, which should be amazing. I mean, this is the worst screen on earth to see it on. Of course, it's like, I'll be ready to read the word Christopher because it's a lot of letters. So useless in that sort of respect, but interesting that it's pulling the fucking tag information. Um, and then this is Bluetooth again. Then you have under display, audio in, which is the three and a half in, digital in, which is the fiber optic in, which is what I'm using from this. We'll get back to you in a second. PC in, which is a USB in, in the back, which is just a USB micro. It's not USB-C. I'm assuming this is an old unit made its way across here. We have two buttons for Bluetooth, standby and pairing, which you hit pairing when it's pairing, you hit standby when you want to disconnect it from the device. Let's change the tracks one more time. Wake up, wake up in the morning dew. Maybe I have to pause it, then I could hit standby. I don't know, Bluetooth standby doesn't seem to do shit. I've been trying to hit it and make it do things. Bluetooth pairing, I understand. Bluetooth standby, not so much. Here's your mute button to mute it, because it will just mute. Your volume controls are down here in the bottom corner, which I hate. When it comes to remote control design, if you hold it like this, assuming you're a righty, this, where your thumb is, should be the volume controls. It's the thing you're going to use the most. Maybe in the fact of this, you're going to use next track, last track, and then adjust. But down here where you have to grab the bottom corner, I don't like that. You do have bass and treble adjustments, which let's see how many fucking decibels we got. I didn't actually... Five, five, five. Five dB up and down, bass and treble. And you could either hold it and it goes one, two, three, four, five. You could smash the button because you want to... I got to get places. So you get some treble and, and uh, bass adjustment. And that's the end of the remote control. We've now disabled that. I'm gonna make sure this is, you sleepy now? You a sleepy boy? Here, I'm gonna shut off the Canna Bluetooth. Let's plug in a USB stick, because we go into the future. Ta-da! So it's its own player now. So now we gotta to switch to digital in, audio in, is audio in twice, digital in, digital in. Well, that's that. How ironic is it that Stranger Things is now on? Oh my god, Stranger Things is real, because that was playing Stranger Things, not this is playing Stranger Things. So that's, digital in is that, PC in is the back, which just made a pop. I can't seem to get it, maybe folder does it? To that USB in, unless I hit the source button on the front of the unit, and now it says USB read. I, there's none of these buttons. Audio in, digital in, PC in, you get it multiple times, doesn't do it. You hit that source button there, the physical one, it says it's 39.8 gigabytes, which is a lie, it's an eight gig. 39.8, I don't, I don't get it. We hit play on USB. <laughs> Gary Clark Jr. comes on. We get folder, folder one, it does not Pause that. Hit display. Nine seconds. We can we get this? Hold on. Let me see if I can. Oh, on what? Uh, I'm gonna lower the volume. Oh, it's so slow. 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26. By the way, the volume goes from z from min, which is zero, to max, which is 41. I thought that was interesting. It doesn't go 39 max. It goes 39, 40 max, and the volume is incredibly slow so fucking slow on the remote you can turn the knob quick enough and you can hear the steps because it's digital 
pause. Can I double, can I next track if I do something here? I don't think the controls for the USB stick really matter that much, but you can just, you know, next track. It does read out, but it's different. How many letters is that for? Eight, eight characters at a time, and then it slowly scans over. And you hit a folder button to jump between folders. But fortunately, it just says folder 04. That restarts it. That's next trick. Folder one. I think these are MP3s. I think these are in folder one, which is the root directory. I know I, I said a root directory. So folder one is nothingness and MP3 is just thrown in there. And then the rest are flack to make sure this plays flack because God knows. Oh, I'm sorry. These aren't AUG files. We don't play that. I wasn't testing with AUG, by the way. This is all useless information. I know none of this is important to you and I'm wasting your time. There's a sound on my track. Love is a frightful thing. Um, all right, I'm done with this now. Taking you out. Putting you on, just hit the source button. No USB, Bluetooth, no digital. Digital, this, her. We're playing her now. Nine Inch Nails. This unit at four ohm, 10 watts per channel. I paid $300 for it, $300 for it. And I knew this going in, but I know Japan. This is a Japanese designed unit to be sold in Japan, even though it's all in English. And 10 watts, that's the least amount of power I think almost any amplifier I've ever reviewed has had. Maybe that little knob sound thing that I threw on the table. But here's the thing, you crank it to max, which is not hard. I don't hear any distortion. So I'm sure it's a digital amplifier. I'm sure it's, it's class D, class T, something like that. But where this would be an SMSL 45 watt amplifier, fucking Kenwood said, I right, measure distortion levels. All right, put them up, put them up, put them up. All right, that's as high as you want distortion to ever get. How many watts is that? 10, label it, mark it, put it on the box. Limit it there. Where SMSL or Topping or anybody else who's dealing with digital amps would be like, How, I keep going, oh, keep going. What's distortion at? 10%. All right, that's about it. That's our power rating. I never trust the power rating on any class D amplifier. Not even my crowns in the living room. My living room cr crowns at eight ohms claim 1,550 watts. And if you asked me to push them to that, I'd be like, no. But I would absolutely trust them at 997 watts because that'll be clean as fuck. That last like percentage of lift takes it straight to distortion, any digital amplifier. But Kenwood saw that because you can measure that sort of shit and went, uh, eh, that's enough. 10 watts, put them out. Don't, don't distort. Don't, don't even get close to distortion. And that's on the four ohm load, which means if you have more efficient speakers, you're not even getting 10 watts. You're getting some minuscule amount of wattage, like four and a half. And sitting here at this desk with these Yamo 803s, this is fine. This is fine. Little Shop of Horrors. Little Shop, Little Shop of... Shit, I keep singing in my reviews. My doctor gave me pills to make that stop. I won't take them, though. I like singing. The only time you might feel like you need more is on very quiet, well-recorded music. This is a very quiet track. And I'd kind of want 10, 15% more, and it's not there. You want headroom in an amplifier. This amplifier has no headroom. 10 watts, you start, you get there, you're done. And that's fine, as 
long as you understand that, as long as you use efficient speakers. Hard to drive speakers? No. No. I'd even prefer more efficient than these. Clips, like, pull my, um, hey, Zeos in the future, link to the RP150Ms. Those are back there. They're part of my shelf system, and I feel bad because I really want to hear them again, but it would involve taking my whole fucking rack apart, and I ain't, I ain't, I ain't down for that. It's too cool to be using, like, it's ghetto fabulous. Speakers, piece of wood, headphones worth more than my actual white car, speakers, another piece of wood, and more headphones worth... Eh, yeah, that's worth more than my Corolla. The fucking uh, ethers throw it off. So, I mean, where was I? I got off on a tangent. It's not a very powerful amplifier. It's very clean. I will give it that. It is a clean amplifier. It's... At low volumes, it's topping PA3 clean. It's at least that. It's 300, you're paying 300 fucking dollars. They're not ripping you off, but you're getting a lot less than you'd get if you just went to China and said, hey, top ASMSL or topping or mono price, make me an amp for $300. I'm like, oh shit. The reason I compared it to the PS Audio Sprout is because it's very clean and it does everything. It's got a DAC, it's got USB, it's got Bluetooth. It's a speaker amp, it's a headphone amp. We have to talk about the speaker, the headphone amp now, um, which comes into play. Just plug it in, it switches over. I prefer a switch, but I'm not gonna start arguing with this unit now. These are very efficient, very French headphones. On this quiet song, I'm maxed out and I'm like, <sighs> it's not the best headphone amp I've ever heard. It delivers the DAC and it is good. I don't think they're using a dedicated headphone amplifier in this. I can't know for sure unless I yanked it apart and then learned all about electronics and then looked inside of it. But I mean, it's like, It makes the headphones go. These headphones go at maximum volume. These headphones go. This is up. The saddest thing ever is when, well, hey, that happens. My 300 ohm HD 600s come out. And at maximum volume, I'd say we're at right at the line for minimum amount for listening. Like it's playing and I wouldn't be able to hear a conversation with a human being right now on this screamy Dragon Ball Z track. But Tom Petty comes on or Vincenzo Salvia, who's part of the 80s dream compilation. It's maximum volume. This is maximum, maximum, $300 I paid. And I, I guess they're intended to only run IEMs, but even IEMs, some of the IEMs I have, the tin P1s and such, they're hard to drive. Tin P1s need power. Everyone gets tin P1s, they don't like them. Try putting a watt through them, just to fucking back them up with a straight watt. And you'd be like, oh, oh, they're planar. Okay, and they're inefficient. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Sure, tapes are a much easier set to drive. The little electrostatic drive does its thing. Still not the most efficient, but they're not as hard to drive as the P1s. And even those, I wouldn't trust this to push. I'm almost tempted, almost. I'm this close, which is a lie, because this close is not to scale. This is about two and a half fucking miles um, to building an adapter so I can just pull the fucking speaker outputs to the front and have a quarter inch jack just to see because the speakers sound clean now you can't judge absolute zen level cleanliness on speakers unless you have very good speakers you absolutely know i would trust the 600s being powered off of this unit in the back over speakers it's a disappointment in power but it's more than clean enough i'm not going to really give this a recommendation i bought this on a whim because i wanted to review a kenwood I wonder if you can with all these fucking things. USB, Bluetooth, near field communication, USB, fiber optic. It's got it all. Are you coming down? It weighs nothing. 
which is, I guess, not a detriment, although, like, you could just wing it around. I guess you're traveling, but then you gotta take a transformer with you. <sighs> Mildly underwhelmed, slightly disappointed. Certainly, when you plug a headphone into it, you start, like, questioning your, your spending decisions, which at least I have an excuse. I live here amongst this shit. And I need more shit to put out a video every fucking day. So when I make the poor buying decision of like throwing three hundred dollars at a at a Kenwood amp, at least I get to review it. I get to talk to you guys about it. I get to use a waifu wallpaper. It's an excuse to take down some speakers, which actually have a couple more. Ironically, I have not one but two SMSL amplifiers that uh, need to use speakers. So they'll be these speakers will be here for the another two videos. I'll get those coming up next figure out their quirks and features and get them doing hopefully they have a little more a little more go into them and uh they'll blow this thing out of the water they will not have the feature set and they won't i won't be able to say yeah this is a japanese kenwood made in malaysia it's a malaysian made japanese kenwood i would have loved this to be a, like for this to have been remarkable that 10 watts would have to have powered every speaker i put a couple I'm not gonna lie to you, I put one pair of speakers on. I could tell if a fucking thing. Put these on. Eh, I want more efficient speakers. All right, how many headphones? Uh, three or four. KPH 30Is, you're all right. Anything more than a KPH 30i, it, it, it's not worth it. And then you're looking at the price. Now it's 320 on Amazon. And it's like imported product with the, with the, where does it say? 430 grams is what that weighs, by the way. Some headphones weigh 430 grams. Consumes 15 watts, outputs 10 watt, 4 ohms, with only a reproduction band of 30 hertz to 40,000 hertz. So not even 20 to 20. It's 30 to 40, which is a weird. Uh, oh my god, who who did this? Desktop audio that leads to multi... That leads to... I, I think this has the worst description. It can also be enjoyed as a theater speaker. I, I did not know that. I'm putting that in... That's great. I didn't know this could also be a theater speaker, but apparently it can. Well, anyway, I'm going to move on. I needed to get this out of the way. I'm not upset that I bought this, but I learned a valuable lesson. Yard sales. They always need things. So here you go. If you're a $5 patron or subscribe star subscriber, I call them sub stars for short, um, you'll be able to buy this. And I guarantee you no one's going to bid $320, which is what it currently sells for. So if you'd like to try something like this, if this is perfect for you, spend $5. The post goes out in the first of the month. You have from the first to the 10th. Throw a number at it. Something you think it's worth. I think that's worth $123.85. I get that money. Uh, you should live continental the United States. I ship for free. You live in Russia. I charge you half shipping. I'll take a loss. That's fine. I'm fine with losses. I'm fine with losses. By the Canna. It's Canna, all right? It's the Canna amp. It's the K-N-A, K-N, K-A-N-A-7. I, I should have used Canna as a wallpaper, damn it. Anyway, that's that. The file out tier gets you, obviously, to see these reviews early. Yard sales I just talked about. Ask me any questions you want on the platform. Usually answer them about once a week. The $10 tier, you're on my phone. I'm in there all the time. People are talking to each other. If you have to ask me something specific, you would at me, or you can PM me. I prefer if you at me in the chat. Um... That's the ten dollar tier, and then higher tiers than that are secret tiers. I do secret things. Huh? 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 I don't know what I'm doing them yet. Anyway, check that out. Check out Hi-Fi Guides. I'm not sure if we have a section for integrated amplifiers. Maybe there will be one after this video because there's a couple of these, and there are gonna be a couple more, and maybe we'll show them in there. So that's it. Are we done? Can I go take a nap now? I'm gonna take a nap. I'm actually gonna swap out amps. Then I'm going to take a nap. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Wallpaper in the description. Supplemental. I'm packing it back in its original box, which is this. And I've never come out to get the camera again, but I want to show you some japanese -ny. So I put it in these foam blocks on the outside, back in the bag, I'm packing up for the yard sale winner. And I can't get it in the box. I'm like, why won't this go in the box? And then I look and I see because there's this cardboard ridge right here down one side where they folded the box. Right here, this piece of the fucking styrofoam is indented in 
to accommodate for the cardboard cut out of the box. So it'll slide in perfectly where it couldn't go in. It's so tight it couldn't go in. And that's why you buy Japanese fucking Kenwood. Because that's my cell don't think in that certain of fucking... Anyway, that's it. Just, need, just needed to get that out there. Because I didn't notice in the unboxing. That's ridiculous. Alright, put the rest away.